In this video, we are going to cover storage replica. We are going to talk about what the storage replica is, and we are also going to use PowerShell to configure storage replica between two servers. So uh, first, a short introduction. Storage replica is a new feature that was introduced in Windows Server 2016, and it is a uh, feature that does block level replication. So this means that it's not a replication solution like DFSR is where it copies files directly. It goes underneath the files directly at the file system level and copies block by block. And the cool thing about the storage replica is that it uses SMB3 as its uh, replication protocol. This means that it will use all the advantages of SMB, like uh, SMB multi-channel, RDMA, encryption, and so on. In a case you may have uh, a limited bandwidth between the two servers that you want to replicate data between, you can also precede the data before the initial replication, thus conserving a lot of precious bandwidth. Also, if you want to uh, give different people rights to manage storage replica, but you don't want to give them rights on the other services uh, from, that, uh, from those servers, you can delegate rights using a, a local uh, storage replica administrator group. And another thing worth mentioning is that the destination volume will not be available during replication. So uh, if you have uh, two servers, the volume on the destination server that is replicating will not be available, only the one on the source server. Okay, so let's talk about some requirements for using storage replica on Windows Server 2016. First and most important, uh, be careful that you install the data center edition and not the standard edition because Storage Replica is available only on data center for Windows Server 2016. Also, the servers that are part of the replica should have at least 2 GB of RAM, but I would assume this is not a problem these days. And uh, you will also need a volume that should be used only for logs. So that volume should not be used for anything else but uh, for the Storage Replica logs. The 445 port, which is the port for SMB, should of course be opened in the firewall, since SMB is used to replicate the data. And the log volume should be uh, 9 gigabytes by default. And uh, be careful that the same size is used on both servers, source and destination. And since we are talking about volumes, also the data volumes should match in sizes. So if uh, on the source you have a data volume of 1 terabyte, it should be the same size on the destination. So now let's talk about the two replication types available in Storage Replica. First is the synchronous replication, and in this case, you will mirror data within a low latency network and uh, this also provides a crash consistent volume. This means that uh, since the uh, replication is synchronous, every time you write something on the primary server, it will write it also on the destination server and then acknowledge that the write has been finished. It means that when uh, something happens and you need to switch to the replica site, all data uh, should be there. There should not be any missing files. But because of the way this works, you should only consider using it for mission critical data as the synchronous replication could uh, possibly slow down your applications since it has to make sure that it writes data on both sides. The second type is the asynchronous replication and this mirrors data across network links with uh, higher latencies, but of course does not guarantee that the data at the replica side will be the same as that on the primary side when a disaster happens. Of course, because it's asynchronous. 
let's also talk about the uh, possible replication configurations that you might use. The first is the stretch cluster. And in this scenario, you could have a couple of cluster nodes in one location that are connected to a storage device. Other nodes are placed in another location, of course, connected to another storage device. And storage replica can be uh, created between these nodes to replicate data from one storage device to another. You can use it in both synchronous or asynchronous uh, types. The second configuration is cluster to cluster. And this just means that you will replicate data from one cluster to another. So in this uh, scenario, you have two clusters. And the other scenario uh, that is possible is server to server, which is somewhat similar to cluster to cluster. One server will be the primary, the other one will be the replica. And there is a fourth scenario that is not listed here, which is called server to self. This means that you can have uh, two volumes on the same server and you can replicate data from one volume to another. If you want to get more in-depth info about the storage replica, I also put a link to the official Microsoft uh, documentation. I encourage you to read it. And next we are going to actually configure storage replica using PowerShell. So I have two file servers, FSO2 and FSO3 are their names. On these servers I have uh, two volumes, uh, one for data and one for logs, 4 gigabytes and 9 gigabytes respectively. And we are going to configure storage replica for the 4 gigabyte volume and use the 9 gigabyte volume as a log. So the first thing we have to do is actually install storage replica and the first command will do this on both the servers. And yeah, as you see, the scenario that we cover here is uh, the server to server replication scenario. And I also configured this command to restart the servers after it is done. So now the servers uh, will be restarting. And with the servers restarted, we can continue. The next two commands have to be run directly on one of the uh, nodes. And this is because we can't use PowerShell remoting since uh, the commands will connect to both uh, nodes, source and destination and using it for PowerShell remoting with, would mean that we would have more hops for our credentials, which is not uh, allowed. Mm -hmm. And these two commands do the following thing. The first command is just uh, for testing, and this will tell you if your two uh, servers will be ready or are ready to be part of a storage replica relationship. And here is uh, the here are the parameters. First, you enter the source computer name, the source data volume, and the source log volume. Then you enter the destination server with the destination volumes. In this case, since it's only a test, I will use this parameter. But in production, I would suggest you remove it. So all, uh, the command also does performance tests. Also, the duration should be a little bigger if you are going to use the servers for production. And I will place the results in this uh, case in C, not in E. And the second command actually creates a uh, storage replica partnership. And the parameters are very similar. The source computer name, we have to give the uh, replication group a name. I chose RG01, then we specify the two volumes, then the destination part, and at the end I will specify that I want the synchronous replication mode. So let's go ahead on one of the servers and run these two commands. So normally uh, we would run the test command first, and then uh, after we see that everything is okay we run the second one. But in my case, I'm sure everything is okay because everything is already prepared. So I will run both commands together and then we will check 
the test results so you see how it looks and you see that the test is okay everything is uh, validated already and the partnership for the storage replica has been already created now let's also check out how the report looks so this is the file that you will get and this should show you if you have any errors or things like this in our case everything should be okay we only have two warnings no errors so uh, like I said everything was already prepared now that uh, this uh, part is done we can go ahead and get some data about what we just did we can get from uh, the one of the two servers a list of all the storage replica groups using this command and we see that we only have one uh, group RG RG01 where the current computer name is FSO2 and this is the primary server and it's in synchronous uh, replication mode also we can get the replication partnerships which in this case it's also only one between FSO2 and FSO3 and from the replication group we also have the possibility to get the replicas which means the uh, other server to which we replicate our data now i prepared a couple of commands with which you can monitor your replication and these have to be run like specified here either on the source or on the destination the first command will get different events from event viewer that are related to storage replica from the host so you have to run uh, this, com this command on the source server which is FSO2 in our case and you see that it gets a couple of uh, events like uh, successfully, successfully established a connection to partner replica source entered ready state and so on with this you can know if everything is okay or not now for the other side we can also get uh, different events like for example we can get an event that the partnership has been created if it has been created so this has to be run on the destination and we see that the event uh, shows us everything we need to know we can also get something very interesting we can obtain the number of bytes that are still remaining to be replicated in case a replication is going on at the moment and i don't think it is because now this value is zero so the replication from the source to the destination should already be done for the initial stage and there are also a couple of more uh, events that you can get from the destination host to be able to know the status of your replica on that site now another command that might be useful at some point is the command to change the order of the replication so in case something happened on the primary site and you need to switch to the other server you can use a set sr partnership to change the source to the other server so you see here new source computer name will be now fso3 the destination will be fso2 and the replication group name is the same in this case and this command should be run directly from one of the servers not with powershell remoting so now everything is done and we should now have the fso3 server as our primary and it's very easy actually to check also from here in case we cannot access the d volume anymore it means that it worked 
and you see that it cannot find it but we should be able to see it on the other server so on FSO3 we now have the D volume accessible like I said on the destination server the volume that is replicating is not accessible only on the source and the last two commands that I want to show you are the commands to terminate a partnership and a group for storage replica and also these two commands have to be run directly on one of the servers and this uh, really don't take too much to run and now both servers should have the D volume accessible because they are not replicating anymore they are uh, standalone servers so this was it for working with uh, PowerShell to configure and manage storage replica I hope you enjoyed the video please like it and share it if you did also subscribe if you want to be notified of new videos that I put out and thanks a lot for watching